Francis Ngannou won. Regardless of what the decision was, the fight was not supposed to be that close. The fight was not supposed to be arguably going to Francis, right? So many people believe that Francis won and the fight was robbed from him. He just gave Tyson Fury, the best heavyweight boxer on the planet, the hardest fight of his life and arguably beat him. A guy who made his boxing debut, first time ever boxed, and he arguably beat the best in the world. We all have to give our respect to Francis Ngannou. Nobody believed he can pull off anything close to what he did out there. He dropped Tyson Fury with a clean left hook over the top. Fury tried to say it was on the back of the head. It was not on the back of the head. It was like toward the temple above the ear. Ngannou was having a lot of issues throwing that left hook early as Tyson Fury was lighting him up. But as we all know about Francis, the guy's chin is unparalleled in the heavyweight division. This guy can eat punches from like 270 pound plus fighters like Tyson Fury and never being rocked, never being out of it, eating those punches. We saw this first evidently when he fought Stipe Miocic who also has one punch knockout power. And all the narratives going into the fight was about Ngannou just being a power puncher. This guy's not a boxer. Not only did he show that he did live up to the power, but he's one of the best boxers as well. Technically speaking, Francis Ngannou did a lot of good stuff out there. So when we talk about the best heavyweight boxers on the planet, Tyson Fury, Alexander Alexander Usyk, Deontay Wilder, we also have to throw in Francis Ngannou into that mix. Do you know how crazy that fact is? This guy has never boxed before. All these other guys, Olympic boxers, trained since they were kids, raised by other boxers to become the best in the world. Ngannou did some boxing, of course, for MMA, but it's a different element over there. For the first time, this guy goes and almost beats the best in the world. I thought Ngannou won the fight. I thought Ngannou won it by 95-94. The 96-93 scorecard was complete BS. That was ridiculous. That was one of the wildest things I've ever seen. The biggest upset in combat sports. So the story of the fight pretty much went like this. There was a pattern here. Tyson Fury started the fight throwing a lot of left hooks into right straights. He threw the combination a lot. This was even talked about in the breakdown before this fight happened. If you wanted to watch that long drawn out broadcast, I mean, this fight took forever to get started. If you did watch it, they did talk about the left hook into a right straight combo for Tyson Fury, but they did leave out that Stipe Miocic, the former UFC heavyweight champion, was doing a very similar kind of thing against Ngannou the first time they fought and was successful. And Fury was also successful, landing a lot of left hooks, lining up the right straight. This is landing because Ngannou constantly was throwing the counter left hook the entire fight. That's even how he got the knockdown. This is a reason why that left hook right straight combo from Fury was not being thrown as often after that happened to him, understandably so. So the early success of Tyson Fury throwing that combo was trying to get on the inside of Ngannou's left hook. But when the knockdown happened, he missed his punch and Ngannou landed the left hook toward the ear, not behind the head like Fury said it was, it was toward the ear, which is completely allowed, and dropped him. After this happened, Fury decreased the amount of times he threw that combo and started sticking behind the jab a lot more, winning rounds. He was outboxing Ngannou, sticking behind the jab without committing forward into the power puncher. Every time he throws the right straight, he is moving forward at the more powerful fighter. But when he sticks behind a jab using his reach advantage against a guy who's supposed to be not nearly as good in boxing, he's going to be able to win exchanges and ultimately win rounds off of his jab alone. Because what was happening constantly was, whenever he threw the jab, Aganu again was only throwing the counter left hook and missing because Tyson Fury kept going in and out with the jab. He won like two or three rounds off of this. But then it changed in the seventh round. This is the round that Aganu arguably won. What did Francis Agano do to address this? He actually adjusted intelligently and switched into southpaw in the seventh round. By switching into southpaw against Tyson Fury's orthodox stance, it takes away the open jab. Now Tyson is going to have to work for that opening. When two fighters are mirrored in stance like this, one orthodox and the other southpaw, they're going to have to fight each other's lead hands in order to create that opening. Because constantly Ngannou was keeping his lead right hand onto Tyson Fury's jabbing hand, not allowing it to get through. So it became more of a battle of the power hand, which is what Ngannou wants. And because of this adjustment, Francis Ngannou arguably won the 7th and 8th rounds, even outsmarting the likes of Tyson Fury in his own game. And even after Ngannou dropped Fury, he didn't rush for the knockout, he didn't get overly excited, he stayed focused on the task at hand. He was finding the lineal heavyweight champion in his own game. It could have been a little too risky to go for the knockout right after that. And when you look at how that knockdown happened, 
So whenever Tyson Fury would go forward and throw the left hook into a right straight, which was the main combination he was throwing at Ngannou and catching him because Ngannou loves to throw the counter left hook that comes very looping. And because of that wide arc, it can get to places that boxers don't expect to get hit at. So he threw it a few times in the first couple rounds and then he throws it right before the knockdown. So the first time he throws it, he steps forward slightly to his left as well to look for the left hook. And Ngannou intelligently brings up his right hand to block that punch. And notice how Tyson Fury he brings down his right to cock it before he throws a powerful right straight. He misses target and Ganu is slightly moving. His head is on the inside of the punch and he moves Tyson Fury's hand to the left side. And notice after the punch, there is a big target over the shoulder on Tyson Fury and you can see Ganu is looking straight at him. He sees the opening. Look at this whole area right here that Ngannou can loop a left hook right over into. And Tyson Fury does it again. He throws the same combo, steps forward slightly to his left to start up with a left hook. Ngannou again goes to block it. This slightly gets right around the guard. And Tyson Fury throws the right straight. He tries to pinpoint it on the chin better because last time he missed the target by throwing it too much to his own right. So this time he throws it more on the inside, angling it a little bit more into the center instead. And he misses the target. He hits Ngannou's arm. Left that opening just like last time. And Ngannou clobbers him with the left hook, dropping him and scoring that round in automatic 10-8. Good capitalization from Francis Ngannou right there, man. And what I really love for Francis was the way he manipulated the clinch. He landed that one first uppercut when Tyson Fury was backed up into the corner. And we all know what Tyson Fury likes to do when he's in that position. So what Francis did was he put bicep control on him, extended his arms to keep Tyson Fury far enough for him to rip in an uppercut quickly. He also was using the body lock, getting close to his back, wrapping him up. He had more control in a lot of these clinches than Tyson Fury did. It allows Francis to have control of how much effort he's putting into these clinches. When you have that level of control, like a body lock, you don't have to exert that much strength to hold them. If he didn't have that kind of grip, it would be a different thing. But Ngannou knew exactly what he was doing, using the clinch to his advantage, as an MMA fighter should. Now look at this clinching sequence right here. Look how much control Ngannou has. So Tyson Fury is in the southpaw stance, and he fires from long range the left hook by stepping far out to his own right with his lead foot, trying to get that angle in there, but Ngannou quickly blocks the punch, picking up his right guard, and Fury goes to clinch up right away. He does his technique to a lot of boxers. He throws out something from long range just to follow it up with a clinch, using his own body weight against his opponent to wear them down. But he's fighting an MMA fighter, someone who understands the clinch. So look what Ngannou does right away. He has his left shoulder into Tyson Fury's jaw and having that bladed stance, using that arm to create a little bit of separation, enough room for him to squeeze in his own hands to find different grips. So look, by stepping back with a shoulder facing Tyson Fury, he's able to create that little bit of separation you see right there. That's enough for him to have some bicep control with his right hand here, controlling Tyson Fury's ability to clinch up with him. And Fury does not really adjust his grip at all. He keeps walking into Ngannou, showing a difference in knowledge about the clinching game between them two. The way MMA fighters clinch is very different than the way boxers clinch. And because of Ngannou's right bicep control and the fact that he kept his stance a bit sideways to Tyson Fury with Fury walking into him, trying to just hold on what he had instead of adjusting it, showing that he didn't know how to correct his position, Ngannou was able to backstep at an angle and find a right straight, looking like it may have glanced a right straight to Fury's jaw, but more importantly, Ngannou was able to escape using this as well. Beautiful work from Francis Ngannou. Ngannou put a tie plum on him as well. Look at Ngannou's tight overhook in that sixth round. Fury's trying to get his arm out of there. It looks like he's wincing a little bit. Ngannou has that thing so tight. And if you leave your arm a bit too loose in there, you can get your shoulder hurt. That's what John Jones did to Glover Teixeira when they fought each other. But he did crank it, right? If Ngannou really wanted to hurt Tyson Fury in there, of course, it'll be against boxing rules. But he could have easily cranked that and blow out Tyson Fury's shoulder. And people are probably wondering what happened to Tyson Fury's gas tank. This guy's gone 12 rounds how many times in his career in 10 rounds he starts to gas out toward the end a lot of people missed how many body shots Ngannou hit him with Ngannou landed a bunch of body shots on Tyson Fury throughout the fight and you could probably understand early when Ngannou was doing that it would be a lost cause because he would be the guy that gasses out but he landed so many body shots he made Tyson Fury fatigue in those later rounds in his own sport too Ngannou fought extremely intelligent in there did not just headhunt did not just look for the knockout. The guy boxed 
very, very well. Mixing up the body and the head the way he did is something most boxers, especially lately, have not done against Tyson Fury. And another reason as to why Fury may have gassed out was because of the clinch. He's grappling with a guy who's around the same weight as him, right? Usually Tyson Fury is by far the bigger fighter, right? He's like outweighing most of his opponents by at least 20 pounds. Him and Ngannou are around the same weight. It's a different kind of thing for Tyson, man. And Ngannou used that power threat to set up some of those body shots. When he would throw a jab forward, Tyson Fury looked to counter him with the left hook, expecting Ngannou to headhunt for the knockout, right? He has that kind of power, so if he has it, he's probably gonna wanna use it in order to knock Fury out whenever he can. But Ngannou played it a lot more technical than Tyson Fury ever expected. He went forward very quickly, threw the jab toward the head, triggering Tyson Fury's counter left hook to come through, and Ngannou anticipated it perfectly. He ducks under the left hook and lands a right straight to the body. This is what I'm talking about. A lot of big body shots from Francis was landing on Tyson Fury throughout the whole fight. This is what contributed to Tyson Fury starting to gas out in those later rounds. And not only did he land the punch, he exits away perfectly, feeling himself a little bit, dropping his hands and moving around, something we don't see from Ngannou too often. We never seen elusive Ngannou moving around so quickly like that. But the guy really felt good out there against the best heavyweight boxer on the planet and then makes him pay immediately after this happens. Tyson Fury returns with a jab to the body. He tries to land some body shots of his own here, knowing that Ngannou needs to gas on himself, you know? Tyson Fury needs to start investing in the body. And as soon as he does, Ngannou throws a left hook, which gets his body sideways, throwing off the target of where Tyson meant to hit him at, and catches Tyson Fury with a very good left hook. Look at this distance management from Francis Ngannou. Pumps a jab to mask and a step forward because he does have a reach disadvantage against Fury. He wants to enter in to find his own range. And off of the pump, he steps in further to land a jab toward the chest and at the same time expects Tyson Fury to try to counter him with his longer reach, which Ngannou back steps away off of his own jab, successfully making that counter left hook miss. So he found his range a bit right there. Goes in for another jab, which Tyson Fury tries to counter with his own, but Fury stepped slightly to his own left side, angling himself for the right hand of Ngannou to connect, right over the shoulder. And there was another time a very similar kind of sequence happened where Ngannou goes and throws a jab, gets close to the target, and Tyson Fury tries to counter with a left hook, missing as Ngannou moves away from it, getting his range down. Fury addresses this. He knows exactly what Francis Ngannou is going to do next, so he has to be the one that attacks first, with something a bit different. He goes for a body jab, one of the safer punches to throw in boxing, using it to disrupt an offbeat Ngannou a bit. There was a great combo from Tyson Fury. He set up Ngannou pretty well to connect a right straight. He fakes a jab by bringing his hand up, causing a reaction out of Ngannou, so Ngannou moves his head to the left. Fury uses that to stutter step before stepping in long for a left hook lining up the right straight. Knowing that Ngannou's head is to the left like that, he's gonna reinforce the head to stay there because Ngannou now does not want to move his head to the right, knowing the left hook is coming toward that side. So he wants to keep his head on his own left, opening up a right straight, even though Ngannou tried to quickly move his head away from the right straight as soon as Tyson Fury retracts his left hook. But he still gets caught throwing his own counter left hook just like last time. But then again, like, that should be a given. He's Tyson Fury. He should be landing punches like this. He should be getting away from the left hook off of his jabs. The fight should not have been as difficult as it was, but it just turns out to be that Francis Ngannou is a very good boxer for heavyweight standard. Ngannou just did a magnificent job, better than most could have imagined. So I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown, and if you did, make sure to give this a like, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. My scoring video is gonna come up next. It's gonna be a little bit different because boxing has a different scoring system than MMA, so it's gonna be a lot more about numbers and not going over every single strike. The numbers are really gonna tell you the story of how many punches missed, how many punches landed, and we're gonna be more focused on just the big punches and who established pressure and controlling the ring more. That's ultimately what we're gonna be looking at.